Hi, this is Doma. Welcome back to my channel of Books and Soul. Like I promised last time uh, during my introduction video, um, what I want to do is I want to discuss or at least try to discuss a book every week. The book that I want to talk to you about this week is um, called Baraba. It's by Part Lagerqvist. So the cover looks like this. Um, it's not in the best condition because it's been traveling with me wherever I go. It's a book that um, that is written in a style that is extremely simple. Uh, I mean, surprisingly simple. There's not a lot of dialogue. Um, also, if there is dialogue, you definitely want to um, read it more carefully because these characters are... They seem always to be discussing things uh, pertaining to um, like the, the most essential questions um, of human existence. So it's not like dialogues for sure. The main character obviously of this book is Baraba. For those of you who do not know, uh, Baraba is uh, a figure that actually um, has a sentence or two um, in the Gospels. He is uh, basically acquitted. So uh, when um, the public has a choice of um, crucifying Jesus or um, Baraba, so sentencing either one to death, everyone chooses to free Baraba and crucify Jesus. Basically, right from the beginning, what strikes you in this book is um, the description that the author gives you of Jesus. Mm, I mean, uh, it's nothing like what you would expect um, Jesus to look like, you know, where uh, maybe because of the depictions we have in churches and on crosses, he always seems like he's well built and stuff. Um, this author, on the other hand, um, talks, to, uh, talks about Jesus as a person who um, looks kind of almost like a boy, just doesn't have any muscles really, he's just kind of lean and lanky. And, and it's interesting because Baraba asks himself this question, like how, okay, power, what kind of power, like why do they say this is, this is the son of God? I mean, if, if anything, this guy hanging there on the cross is like the opposite of a powerful guy. So, so right from the beginning, the, the, the author really makes you um, look through the eyes of the main character of Baraba, who from the moment where he when he gets acquitted, um, I mean he cannot kind of move on. It's it's um, you you'll see this um, when you read it that it's it's almost like a shadow that um, hangs over him wherever he goes, and so he always has this question in the back of his head, like why, or um, he almost feels like he's a um, he's been almost rejected in some way, like he will never be one of the Christians because he is the one that got acquitted um, and didn't die and then Christ got crucified. But then on the other hand, he cannot stop being uh, completely intrigued by Christians. So he follows them around. I mean, it's, it's so well written because this guy has this question, it's like burning inside of him and he keeps following these Christians always always with like the skeptical look like no what are these guys talking about he thinks it's like very weird the way they are all praising this guy who as he kind of says it um who likes suffering or who chose to suffer and how weird is that and why would someone actually want to die because he he reflects on on the death jesus had and stuff so so from um, that point of view it's very interesting basically um, you can kind of go through his journey of faith and it, it is actually one of the main bigger the, the bigger themes of this book is um, is faith and believing there are other wonderful things that the author does in this book the thing that I noticed and I, I really like is he always focuses on eyes so each character first thing you know about the character is what kind of eyes they have so oh, there, there's one blind guy there's a guy who has only one eye. Um, then there's Baraba himself who has deep set eyes, almost as if he's trying to hide something or he's like, you can't discern him really. You don't, he's, he's very hard to understand almost. So they're always some, in some way a reflection of the person. One of my favorite, for example, is St. Peter, whose eyes, he says, are childlike um, and full of peace. Uh, so this is really cool to describe, um, uh, you know, St. Peter. Uh, yes, so 
th this idea of eyes and seeing versus not seeing, darkness versus light, where even if you have both eyes, maybe you don't see exactly, um, uh, let's say, with the eyes of faith. Um, for example, uh, Baraba, who even says, and I, and I even wrote down this quote, Baraba looked down and said that he had not seen it. And deep down inside, he thought how very pleased he was not to have seen it. It showed that his eyes were all right now, like everybody else's eyes, that he no longer saw any visions, but only reality itself. There are many, many instances in the book when Baraba is questioning himself if he actually saw something or if he didn't. Um, there's a moment when Jesus dies that there's darkness everywhere, and he later on finds an explanation for this. Um, so he's always trying to rationalize things. There's the theme of slavery and freedom, which you will see as well, of courage, of what is suffering and what is death. It's interesting how every single one of the characters um, that hears about Jesus, whether it, is right, it, whether it is right at the beginning, right after the, the crucifixion, or whether it is, I don't know, 20, 30 years later, because we actually end up in Rome at a certain point during the persecutions of Christians. Um, it's amazing how each person reacts in a different way. So the Christ message is the same, reactions of people completely different. Some people um, that you would least expect get affected by this message and almost you know, and experience this change, whereas others um, uh, do not. And in a sense, it's a very, very um, relevant book for today as well, where obviously we are 2,000 years after the beginnings of Christianity and the questions are still the same. You know, what is the meaning of death? What is the meaning of suffering? What is the message of, of Jesus for us today? Uh, do we care about him? Who is he? Even, even even that kind of a question, no? And so um, I just want to share with you maybe some of the um, coolest quotes. I mean, the ones that I, touched me the most and I thought were some of the more interesting ones. How can one want to suffer when there's no need, when one's not forced to? This is Barabbas' reflection on Jesus' suffering. And then even Barabba himself asking himself, was there any meaning in the life he had led? It was not for him to judge. There's this one conversation where a Roman governor is talking to one of the characters and he says that uh, Jesus is everybody's God. Um, and this guy says, everybody's God. Hmm. In that case, he must have more than a little power. What does he base it on? On love. And then later on he says, you are just as crazy as your God. So this question of loving one another really intrigues him. And there are moments when he, he really tries to do it um, or he hopes that he's actually doing it. Or maybe sometimes he does it without even realizing it, but it is actually him uh, loving. I recommend it with all my heart to everyone. I think it's a book that is really filled with meaning um, and it asks questions, I mean, very important questions that I think, okay, Barabba's asking them himself and he's exploring them. But I think um, we all should. And I think it's, those are questions that we will always be in some way or another um, faced with. What is the point in my suffering? Um, what are my relationships with others? You know, and the question that is also, I think, important, I mean, whoever uh, we are, I mean, it's such a, a fascinating um, figure. Um, who is Jesus? What is his message? And then this doctrine of loving one another, how does it actually, what does it look like in my life? So let me know what you guys thought about this book. Um, let me know if you are interested in reading it, if you've already read it, what some of your observations and comments are. And um, that's it for today. I hope to see you guys next week with another book. Bye!